appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Well, good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Good to see everybody this morning. Good to be back in Ohio today. We've been in Texas this past week. Got to enjoy some nice, nice warm weather. I don't even know if you can call it warm. It like passes up warm when you when you uh, melt while you're walking around. That's a little bit past warm. But uh, anyway, as you guys know, this is Pastors Appreciation Month, and uh, I get the opportunity to uh, uh, recognize a couple people this morning. Uh, I want to, uh, Rhett and Bobby, if you guys would uh, step forward, please. These guys are uh, youth pastors, and uh, I-, I was, you know, when I was thinking about what I wanted to say this morning, just a few things. Uh, first off, it's, it's Wednesday nights, usually I roll in, Rhett's already here, he's usually sitting out, and uh, whether he's back in this room or outside, uh, making preparations to uh, uh, to speak to the youth. Sister Bobby's usually running around in here getting food out. Everybody say thank you, Jesus. All right, all right. She's always get making preparation, always making sure those kids got food on Wednesday night. She knows some of these kids come in on Wednesday night. That's why they come. They're coming for the coming for the food. But but uh, they're always doing a lot of work. And it's not just on those times, but anytime we have events, things like that. These guys are uh, always working hard and it's not just hard work uh, but it's but it's the right attitude they've always got a smile on their face uh, there's not been a single time that I haven't been able to call on either one of them for something uh, and I call on them often uh, if I need something I can call on them uh, and they're right there uh, and and right there with a good attitude and listen that's what leadership is it's 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 not just being in a position but it's uh, being in a position having the care and the concern that you need. And I'm going to tell you right now, my kids absolutely love these guys to death, and there's a reason for that because they're investing into these young people's lives. And I'm going to tell you, they're making an impact. They really are making a difference. So we just appreciate you guys. God bless you all. Love both of you. Uh, there's, uh, if there's biscuit and gravy coupon in that, you've got to take me with you. All That's right. all I'm saying. That's a deal. Right. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you all. You guys give them a hand clap. We thank God for them. I'm going to tell you something right now. It means something to have good youth leaders. It really does. It's, it's, uh, I, I say it often. I believe this. I was a, a youth pastor myself for a number of years, uh, but I recognize the importance of pouring into the Because these youth are youth now, but it won't be long that they're going to be leading in other parts of the service. So what these guys are doing now will affect this church for years to come. It really does. So the weight of that, uh, we don't always fully understand just how, how important and significant what they're doing now is. Yeah, so you guys pray for these guys because they've, uh, uh, they've got a lot they have to deal with. And if you know anything about teenagers, amen, uh, yeah, any of you that know anything about teenagers, they've got their hands full. So, but, uh, but they do an awesome job, so we're very thankful for them. Anyway, God bless you guys. All right, well, we're going to uh, uh, tackle uh, a, a topic that a lot of people don't like uh, to talk about. And it's, and it's just because it's probably been mishandled. Uh, in the church along the way. One of the first things that I did uh, when I started pastoring about, uh, I don't even talk about how long ago now, it's about 11 years, 10, 11 years ago when I first started as, as a pastor, uh, was I, I studied different topics that I'd heard preached in the church uh, over the years uh, because I, I recognized the weight of responsibility uh, to, to preach what was right. I didn't want to just preach what I'd always heard I wanted to make sure that I was preaching what was biblically correct. Uh, Sometimes we can get caught up in just teaching something traditionally that just because it's always been taught that way doesn't necessarily mean it's exactly what the Bible's saying about it or what God says. And that's what we want to know, right? I mean, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted from my own personal experience. I didn't want to have uh, the weight of man's ideas on my shoulders, and that's hard to carry. When you try to carry man's uh, weight, that, that becomes difficult if you're been involved in a church where it's kind of legalistic, where man's putting these weights on you, that's hard to bear. But when, when it comes to what Jesus said, he says, listen, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. I Meaning when you take a hold of the gospel and you take a hold of the things of God, that is, although there is a burden there, it's a, Jesus doesn't try to relay it as if there isn't a burden, but it's not a, it's not a burden that's, it's, that's hard to carry. It's one that uh, you're able to bear the load of because Christ is walking with you. And if it's something that God has said, this is how it's to be, he will help you along in that pathway. So, uh, so that's significant. I mean, even things like church attendance. 
you know, uh, you know, and that's not what the message is about this morning, but it's important uh, when you realize why. You know, I'd, I'd heard, you know for a long time in, in going through church, I, I, you know, it was kind of driven that you, you needed to be at church, but, but we don't always talk about why. why. Why is it that I need to be at church? And I recognize now, and I had to spend a lot of time even just looking in and studying the church and understanding that, that coming to church, that the, this relationship that I have with God in order to enjoy it in its fullness, I need the body of Christ. I mean, in the, the relationship that I have with God and the way that God has uh, built the church uh, and, and the body of Christ is that we get the fullness of the relationship when we come together. I mean, and I can experience God on my own. I, can, I, can, I could sit at the house and have a relationship with God. It's not what, uh, not what the Bible teaches in any kind of way at all. I could be at home and have an experience with God. But when I come here, I get the culmination of, of each and every one of your uh, experiences with God. And not only that, but the talents that God has gifted you with, the spiritual gifts that you've been given that I don't have. And so when we gather together, right, uh, we get to... Now, that was important for me to learn. It was an important thing for me to gather because then it changed my perspective on why it was I was going to church. Uh, meaning, I, when I began to go to church, not just because it was something I had to do, but I began to go to church because, one, I did want to thank God. I wanted to worship God. I wanted to give God praise because He had changed my life. He had completely turned me around. And then on top of that, I also wanted to know more about God, and I was able to experience that by enjoying uh, the benefits that was received through the body of Christ. Is everybody with me on that this morning? So understanding the why, if it was just the legalistic why, we press through and you can find excuses for the legalistic whys as to not be there. But when you realize and you begin to thirst for the relationship and it's built in that, uh, then, begin, then, then there's a different look at it. I want to be here for different reasons than I used to. Amen? And hopefully that's the same for you. So, so knowing the why is very important. Now, one of the things we're going to be talking about today is tithing. Uh, and and there's, a real, there's been just a, a, a lot of wrong teachings about tithing. Uh, there's been misrepresentation when it comes to giving in the church. Uh, it's sad to say, but there's a lot of places that, uh, uh, that really mishandle uh, God's money. There's a lot of places that... Uh, uh, you know, uh, I've heard preachers that preach things, and I'm not going to throw out any names out there today, but I've heard preachers that preach things that are, that are not gospel-related. Uh, amen. Meaning, if, if I was to stand up here and tell you that if you give $100, that God is going to put $1,000 in your checking account, I am, uh, I'm not going to say that God can't do that, because He could if He wanted to, but there's no guarantee that's going to happen. Amen. Uh, so to preach that would be wrong. So that's not... That's not tithing as God intended it to be preached. There's a right way when it comes to giving. And so today I want to talk about giving. That's the thing I want to talk about. There's a lot of ways to give. Uh, one of those ways is tithing. One of the things we're going to deal with is tithing. But there's a lot of ways to give. I mean, we're to be good stewards of not only our finances, but we're also to be good stewards of our time and of our talents. I was listening about uh, Brother Joe with Sister Sue. Uh, and, and their willingness to, to, to make the food for the craft show. That's a, that's a giving of talent. And if you've eaten uh, Sister Sue, Brother Joe's uh, manwich, you know what I'm talking about when I say talents, right? They got a talent for manwich. I can just tell you that right now. And a lot of cookies and stuff like that that I can tell you got an extra pound or two on me from eating, right? Uh, so, so giving of our talents. We was talking about uh, Rhett and Sister Bobby this morning. Uh, and, and their talents. Rhett has a talent for getting himself in trouble. Y'all heard that? Y'all need to pray for him. It's going to be a rough day at the young household today. Just tell you, he's in for it. I don't know what they were going to have for lunch and what he was going to have. <laughs> right? Amen. Sounds like he's going to have shoe with a little salt because he got his foot in his mouth. But anyway, uh, moving on from that, uh, uh, they, give of their, they give of their time, right? They give of their time and they invest into the church. So there's a lot of ways uh, that we can give. Right, And God wants us to be, and, and we'll share this scripture here in a little bit, He wants us to be cheerful givers. So we're also going to deal with not just, just uh, you know, the, the, the why, uh, but also the how. It's, it's how we give. I uh, mean, you know, it's one thing, you know, you come in with an attitude, like coming to church uh, can be, just coming can be an, you can come at an attitude of worship. Come because we, 
adore God. We come because we, we want to be in His presence. We come because we want to say, God, thank you. We want to come and we want to say, hey, listen, I, I want to lift up hands today because I know that I'm saved and, and I'm, I'm under this umbrella and this relationship. I have hope of heaven. And so, so we come not because we have to, but because we want to. We come into His presence. So, so how we come uh, is as important as the fact that we come because you can come in the wrong attitude. You can come because you felt like you had to with no attitude of worship, no attitude of praise with no attitude of, I'm going to sow and invest into the service. Do you realize that you can come into this service with an attitude of that you're going to give into the service? I mean, when, when you set your heart to give praises to God and to worship God, you're sowing into this service. When we, when we come in with that attitude, it can change uh, the spirit of, of this service. When you come in with that heart and that mind, when you've got a people that come in of one accord with a heart and an attitude to recognize that we're in a lost, dying world, but here we sit in a relationship rescued, set upon the rock uh, with Jesus Christ, and we've been given the opportunity to share such a beautiful thing with the world. God has invested in us, and we, we recognize the investment, and we want to take the time to invest. When you come in with that mentality, uh, in that spirit, it can change the whole service. And so you have to recognize how are you approaching coming into the service of God. Giving is the same way. Uh, we talk, I was just using uh, Bobby and Red as, a, as an example. There, there's one thing, she could, Sister Bobby could come in and set up the food and be complaining about it the whole time, right? She could come in and set up the food and be slinging stuff and everybody looking back, what, what's Sister Bobby doing? She just threw a cupcake at Red. You know, it, it could be, but that's not how it is. She comes in with a smile on her face. She comes in with a good attitude. And so how, how we invest, right, it's not just what we invest, it's how we invest, the way that we invest it is, is, is just as important or maybe oftentimes more important than what it is that we're giving uh, to begin with. Financially, uh, your financial giving is the same way. We ought to be a people that, as the Bible describes, is we ought to be cheerful Givers. I mean, and our attitude toward giving ought to be one of cheerfulness. On top of that, we're going to look at, uh, like I said, we're going to get into the scriptures, and I'm going to share some things with you because I think that's where you have to get your biblical viewpoint. Uh, it, it's important that you see it from what it is that God has said about it. Now, I'll tell you some of the things that you'll hear in the world and the things that people will say about tithing. That is an Old Testament thing. That's what they did back then. God doesn't say anything about it in the New Testament. Well, that is wrong. I'm going to show you that in the Bible. God does teach those principles. And you have to also remember that Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law, right? I just want to make sure you're awake. It's all good. I'm tired too. If I fall asleep, y'all wake me up and I'll keep preaching. Amen? It, it, it's, it's, so he didn't come to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law, right? And so, uh, you, you know, when we talk about laws and giving, I, I want you to understand there's a law that's present uh, when it comes to seed sowing and harvest. You've heard of that, right? seed sowing and harvest. And so part of it, and that's giving on a lot of different levels, coming in with an attitude of worship and giving, uh, you know, an, an attitude of praise or words of praise that you're sowing in one way. Uh, you know, when you give of your time and talents, that's a sowing in another way. And so all of these things are seed sowing. When you invest into the young people's lives, that's a, an investment. There's a seed being sown. And so, you know, there's an expectation as you sow those seeds, uh, amen, that, that there's going to be a harvest. You sow, uh, and then you're going to reap, and you reap what you sow, right? We understand that. And it works the same way when it comes into uh, the financial things as well. And that's the thing we want us to understand. I want us this morning, I don't know how you entered in, when it, in, in your way of thinking when it comes to the financial things of the giving in the kingdom of God, but I want to, first off, if you're not thinking about it right, I want you to get to thinking about it in the right way. I want you to be able to give and give cheerfully. I want you to give and I want you to understand what it is that you're doing when you give. That it's not just something legalistic that God has laid out there and just ordained First off, I'm going to tell you something right now. Do you think God needs your money? No. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. God's got more than all of us put together, right? Uh, it's not about that. There are some things. There's a, there, so we're going to get into some of the whys we give. Uh, why is it that God has said, this is what I want you to do? We're going to talk about first fruits today. 
You know, it's one of the things that, that's often misunderstood when it comes to giving. God, God doesn't want what's left over, right? God wants us to be able to trust Him. So the, part of the reason why, uh, the, the, reason, uh, the reason that He approaches it the way that He does is He wants us to put our trust in Him. He doesn't want you to trust your job. He doesn't want you to trust your finances, your checking account. He doesn't want you to trust the stock market. That's not what he wants you to put your trust in. He wants you to put your trust in him. Are you with me to that place? Amen. It's funny because when you start talking about money, it's, it, you see people grabbing their wallets and just looking at me. Ladies got their purses tugging it under. I'm going to tell you something right now. I have no idea who tithes in this church and who doesn't. I can promise you that. Sister, Sister Bobby can tell you right now I don't come asking about those things. I leave that between you and God. The thing that I want to do this morning is just teach you what's right about that. And there's a blessing in that. Like, I want you to come to church, but I don't want you to just come to church. Right? I want you to come to church for the right reasons. I want you to come to church with an attitude of worship and praise. I want you to give, amen, but I want you to give for the right reasons. I want you to understand why you're giving. And, and listen, I don't want you to miss out on the blessing that there is in giving in the right way. Amen. You know, I want you to give of your time and your talents, but I don't, I don't want you to just give it. I don't want you to just show up, amen. I don't want you to just be here so you can say you're, that you're here. I want you to give with an attitude of understanding that you're sowing into the kingdom of God. I want you to give of your time and talents. Understand it's an investment that you can have. There's an expectation that can be there, uh, amen. There's an expectation that God lays out that says you can expect these things when you're obedient and faithful Amen. When you sow in trust, and that's what we do, uh, we're trusting. Amen. You guys are pouring into youth because you're trusting that God is going to do something. We spend time in prayer, right? Amen. Uh, I hope everybody got up this morning and was praying. But as I was praying, I'm kneeling down. Uh, you know, if, if somebody was looking in, the room was empty except me and, and God. That's it. Right? As I was praying, there's a trust. There's a, uh, there's, a, there's a belief that God is not only hearing my prayers, but I'm believing that He is faithfully moving on those things. God has given us that. We have to be the same way when it comes to our giving. We're giving of our time. We believe. We're investing. We're investing into lives. We're investing, uh, Dwayne and uh, Melinda, investing into those guys' lives. Don't always see the results right away, but we're investing. Amen. Uh, Brother Joe, Sister Bonnie, investing into the lives. Amen. Uh, the people around us, every one of us, your children, all the things, you're investing. You don't always see the results right away, but as you pour into them, it's just like raising children along the way, right? You invest, you don't always see the results right away. Somebody amen that, right? You don't always see the results right away. You see a lot of brain damage. There's a lot of other things that are going on, right? Amen. Eventually, you see them to begin to develop, and so we continue to invest. I want you to look at your sowing into the kingdom of God in the right way. Amen? So I want to travel through the scriptures today. So if you have a preconceived idea, maybe, maybe you've listened to a lot of bad stuff, you've listened to the wrong preachers, you've listened to the wrong things along the way, I ask you to, to clean the slate this morning. Let's go through scriptures and see what God says about those things, all right? Now, some people talk about, should the preacher get paid? Uh, I, I, you know, some topics are uncomfortable to me. I don't like to talk about my own paycheck, uh, amen, because it's just, it's just uncomfortable. I like when somebody else talks about it. But in a situation like this, I think it's important to talk about it so you understand what it is, how God looks at that. Now, there's a scripture that deals with that specifically. Paul himself uh, in the Bible was talking about it, but in 1 Corinthians 9, 14, this is what he says. He says, in the same way the Lord commandeth uh, that those who proclaim the gospel should get their living by the gospel. Amen. Uh, so, so God does ordain that, that ministers are paid. Now, again, there's, we, we, you can look out into the world. This has been, been abused in different ways along the way. And you would agree with me in that. I mean, if I'm buying a private jet on the tithes of the church, I may be abusing the giving of God just a little bit. Amen. Uh, those things like that that take place. But, but God does expect that ministers are taken care of. So uh, we can give, amen. Uh, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to, there uh, isn't an expectation that ministers ought not be paid. We're going to deal with things, we're talking about missionaries. Uh, Paul dealt with those things. Should missionaries be taken care of? We're going to talk about that today. Uh, we're going to talk about what is a tithe, when should we tithe, 
Amen. We're going to talk about some things like uh, do we tithe before taxes or do we tithe after taxes? Some people have asked that question. That's a common question. Do I tithe after or before? We're going to talk about that today. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, uh, uh, is, is, is a tithe designated? I want you to think about that today. Some people misunderstand that. Uh, we have to understand today, first off, the word tithe. Do you even know what that means? It's, it's actually a Hebrew word that means tenth. That's what it literally means. It's just a Hebrew word that means tenth. It's talking about ten percent <coughs> or one tenth, all right? So uh, I, I expect, I can tell you right now, I, I'm faithful in my life by the grace of God to walk in what it is that I'm going to be preaching this morning. God taught me early on, and I, and I, and I didn't fully understand, uh, understand at the time what it was to give financially, uh, but, but I, had, I understood I just wanted to do what God wanted me to do. And so when I first got saved, I can just tell you, I, I was really tender, and anything that I felt like that I was supposed to be doing, I wanted to make sure I was doing that. Now listen, we ought to be that way as the children of God. If it's an expectation of God, we ought to want to do that, right? It ought to be part of what we want to do. Uh, so, so I've done that early on in my Christian uh, walk with God. I have given, and there was times, I can tell you, you've heard me talk about this, uh, that it was difficult, that it, it was uh, difficult to, to let go of that money because I was, I was very broke. I was, I was poor. I've told you about I drove, a, I drove a minivan that wouldn't go in reverse, right? Uh, if we parked in a parking spot that had, you couldn't pull through on, I had to get out and push the van out of the parking spot. That's a lot of fun in Walmart, guys, I'm just going to tell you. You ain't had fun until you've done that, especially when it's raining. That's a lot of fun, too. But anyway, that's another story for another day. Amen? Uh, but it's, so I, I understood I, I, early on, uh, that was, for me, it felt like, although it was the first fruits of, of, what, of my increase, it felt really sacrificial to me. It really did. I felt like I was given sacrificially because uh, I just didn't have a lot of money. Uh, but I can promise you, and I will tell you this right now, and I can say this today. This is, I've been saved more than 20 years now. I will tell you this, that in all of those years in paying my church tithes, I have never, never, not one time, been unable to provide for my family. God has always made a way. Always. I could tell you sitting today of all of the times that, that, that out of nowhere, finances that I stood in need of would come in to, into my hands. I've always been able to pay my bills. I've never once did I ever miss a house payment, never missed a car payment. Not one time in all of those years in the time of giving faithfully. Now, I could tell you about before I got saved, and I could tell you about how things were then. I could tell you that not how it was financially for me. I had a credit number that was real easy to write down. Amen, right? Things changed a lot after I got saved. Of course, I, this, this, this... When I'm talking about seed sowing and harvest, I can promise you right now, it's something uh, that I not only have read about, but it's something that I've experienced firsthand. So I want, you to, I want you to get that today. Some people have not entered into that. Some people are still reserved. Some people still hold on to uh, <coughs> when it comes to their financial giving. Uh, and I can tell you right now, that's not the way that God intended it to be. All right. Uh, so oh, I feel like everybody needs to take a deep breath. Just relax, guys. All right. This is, not, this is not a message to condemn anybody. I, I always want to remind people of that uh, because I may be, as I'm preaching this today, you may be somebody that has not been giving their tithes. You have, may, may not have been paying your tithes. It's okay. Okay, I just want you to listen to that first off because here's the thing that God does. God is very gracious. And it's a whole reason for a teaching like this. God says, listen, this is where you're at, right? If you are in a car and your wheels are in the ditch, it's funny, they put this round thing in front of you that gives you the ability to do what? To steer the car back into the lane, right? And you, you don't have to get so fussy about the fact that you're off the road. You just steer the car back into the road. And that's the thing God does with us spiritually. He says, listen, if, this, you know, if you're operating outside of where you're supposed to be operating, God says, listen, I want to steer you back in. He wants to get us back in the pathway. All right? So there's a lot of things to look at this morning. So... Uh, I want to talk about as well, this is another thing we're going to deal with. Some people uh, don't understand the difference between a tithe and an offering. All right, So we're going to talk about that today too because those two things are different. There's a difference between a tithe and an offering. Okay, So we're going to talk about that also. All right, And I want you to know I get done with this message and you've still got questions about tithing. You can reach out to me 
at any time. I'll be glad to sit down and talk to you about it because, like I said, I studied it for myself uh, before I, I would begin to even preach about anything like this. All right, so Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says this, right? Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Okay, so we'll just start with that portion of the scripture. So he tells us that we're to honor God with our wealth, right? And with the first fruits of our produce. So, so what is our first fruits, right? It's what, it's what comes first. It's not, it's not the leftovers. It's not what's, uh, what's left. It's not, it's not paying all of the bills and, and giving to Aunt Betty and, and Cousin Sue and, and, and all of that and then saying, well, okay, I got a couple of bucks left and I'm going to throw that in the offering plate. That's not what it is. God says bring the first fruits. The first fruits, meaning that is that's how it's intended. Meaning we're before everything else, we believe, first off, again, you'll hear me preach it many times, where is God supposed to be placed? Number two, number three, no, God should be exalted above all else. He is number one. Now, what what we do in our giving will really reflect what we believe about God and where He's at in our life. Now, first off, where do you believe that your wealth comes from? Where do you believe that your ability to have increase comes from? What you really believe about that can will really affect on whether you give or how you give or to what degree you give or whether you give in trusting, whether you give in a, in a place where you believe in faith, how you sow uh, will be directly affected about what you believe about where it comes from. I recognized early on when God saved me, I knew that had I continued down the pathway that I was on, I was going to leave this world uh, and I would have left this world lost. So anything that I was going to do, any, any benefits that came into my life from that place forward, I recognized I owed this to God. I owed Him my life. I owed Him everything about me. Listen, that's, that was a humbling place in my life, and I recognized that everything good that come in, every time, sometimes I'd just get up in the morning, and I'd, I'd be praying, and I'd just breathe in, and I'd realize, you know, I, was, I, 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 I had smoked for years, and I'd quit all of that. And I'd breathe in, I'd breathe deep, and I thought, man, thank you, God, for, for just that breath. I be, you know, you begin to realize some things opened up. And so, so God wants us to recognize where it comes from. So that's, that's as important as anything this morning. Because he says, listen, I want to honor the Lord with your wealth and within, uh, with the first fruits of all your produce. Then, then uh, this is where we get into the, the seed sowing and harvest, all right? Uh, when you look at it from a world's perspective, right, we give and it's gone, right? If you, if you pour into something, you, know, you give money to somebody, it's just gone. But God says, then your, then your barns will be, will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Uh, God's talking about receiving an increase. When you give, you receive an increase. Now, again, the reason I started off with, first off, I'm not telling you right now today that, Brother Dwayne, you put $100 into the offering plate, God's going to put $1,000 into your account. Don't expect that, okay? Uh, but I will tell you, as I said to myself, as all along the way that I've been faithful in, in tithing, God has always provided. Meaning, I have, I've experienced this right here. I went from, I mean, God, I, I had, at the time I had a, a van that, that I couldn't back up. I uh, didn't have the money to buy anything better. And in the time in ministry and all along the way, God has blessed me. And I've been able to buy vehicles that I could put in reverse. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, you got to thank God for the little things in life. Yeah? Hey, going in reverse doesn't sound like a big deal till you can't go in reverse. Amen? Right? So, so those things, God, and, and all of that, I, mean, I have all of this time that I had before, and then I have this time afterwards, and there's a definite difference, amen, in my personal finances of what took place before and what has take, taken place after. As well, God gives us a sound mind, Amen. And we become better stewards of our money rather than throwing it away. Uh, we learn how to, uh, whether invest our money or what we're putting that money into. But he says, then your barns will be filled with plenty. So again, this comes back into a place of, 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 of putting faith and trust in God. Amen. Do you see that this morning? That our giving is, that we, we have to give with faith, believing and trusting. Now there's a lot of things that I can talk about in that as well. We'll get the get to that place. Now, of course, at this time, these guys, a lot of these guys were farmers, and so it talks about the production of their fields is what they were giving. You and I, very few farmers around anymore, right? Uh, so, you know, it's, it's your increase, and that's, uh, that's what we're to look at. All right, so what do you believe about your increase? 
You know, Nebuchadnezzar, if you remember the story about Nebuchadnezzar, it's kind of funny. Nebuchadnezzar was able to build up a, a, a great kingdom, right? But Nebuchadnezzar had the whole wrong attitude about how he got his kingdom, right? Nebuchadnezzar kind of standing there at the wall. He looks out and he says, look at everything that I have done, right? And, and, and so he had the wrong attitude about, about his increase. I mean, God had blessed him, and there had been a, a, a wonderful kingdom built up. But the moment Nebuchadnezzar did that, what did God do? God brought him into check. If you don't know the story, Nebuchadnezzar kind of loses his mind. Next thing you know, he's out in the field with the cows uh, eating grass, right? God brought him back to earth real quick, right? Let him know. First off, it wasn't Nebuchadnezzar that had, given, that, that had the ability to build up what he did. God had blessed him and given him the ability to build up what he had. So his wealth, his increase was of God, amen? Now, he got to enjoy fruits of the harvest inside of God's kingdom and the things that God had done. And, and, but the thing was that Nebuchadnezzar's heart was wrong. So how you look at your increase is very important. Uh, Brother Bill, uh, whatever your financial situation, anything that you have, uh, listen, we have, to, we, have to re, we have to put that in its right perspective. God has provided. Amen? Is that your attitude about your finances? It should be. God has provided. He has taken care of. I love those scriptures that said, I've never seen the children of God doing what? Begging for bread. Why is that? Because God provides for His people. He takes care of us. Now, He does ask that we are faithful, that we, re we reveal in our heart what it is I believe about God. What is it that I believe about my father? Where did I get that from? Nebuchadnezzar had the wrong belief about his increase. Amen? And so we can look at examples like that. God says, listen, I, I want you to have uh, you know, a right heart about your increase. Uh, I, I didn't have this in there, but uh, just the thought of uh, Ananias and Sapphira uh, in the New Testament, we see uh, where they, if you know the story there, these two lied about their increase, right? And if you, if you study the story, you find out uh, there was somebody else that had given, given uh, like the, all of the money for the sale of a property, uh, and, and they were receiving accolades for that. Ananias and Sapphira sold a piece of property, and they wanted to receive the accolades for what they had done. So they lied, they lied, they gave a portion of the sale, but they didn't give the full portion of it. But they lied about it. Uh, they lied about what they were giving. And they did it for the wrong purpose. Because you can, you can see a reflective story when it comes to the widow that gave two mites, right? She, she gave two bits, it was all that she had. She put it in the offering plate, and Jesus praised her for her offering that she gave. That was a right heart. She gave out of humility. She, she, gave, she gave out of, uh, she understood where her increase came from, all of that. Ananias and Sapphira, you read that story, and you have two people there that were giving, you know, they were writing the big check, you know. I want everybody to see my big check that I'm, you know, sticking. That's the wrong attitude. It's not giving for the right purpose. If God has blessed you and you can write a good check, hallelujah, that's good. Praise the Lord. But you ought to do that uh, with a humility, understanding where the wealth came from, not trying to draw attention to yourself, because that's not what it's about. It's about blessing, amen, the kingdom of God because God has blessed you. Hallelujah. Are you with me so far? <laughs> Y'all going to make me cry this morning. Are you with me this morning? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So uh, we have to understand, and I want, I want to make sure we lay this out real quick because uh, the, the difference between an offering and a tithe. When we talk about the first fruits and we talk about the tithe, uh, we can see all throughout the Bible where tithe and offering are separated. They're two different things. A tithe is the first fruits. And we're going to go through some scriptures here, and I can show you what God says about the tithe. The tithe is to be brought to God's storehouse. Amen? All right? Meaning, when it comes to the local congregations in this day, the tithe is intended to go into the coffers of the church. And, and what we have to do as a body. Now, I, I've dealt with a lot of things as a pastor along the way. Whereas we have people that want to have a, uh, have a, a, a chain attached to their tithe. Uh, they, want to, they want to tell you what you're going to do with their tithe. Let me tell you, that's not the proper way to give. When you give of your tithe, first off, they're a local congregation that you're attending. Let me just speak about uh, Sister Bobby this morning. Sister Bobby is a good steward of God's money. Amen? She's our, she's our church treasurer. Uh, we've got a board of trustees as well that is also looking after uh, the money of this congregation. Again, set up with a body of believers that are good, faithful stewards of God's money. Amen? 
All right? And so when we give of our tithes, there ought to be a trust uh, within the local body that first off, we're having a vote this morning. We're voting somebody in else in as a trustee today. That's why it's called trustee. You've got to trust, amen, in the leadership of the body of Christ uh, in order to be able to conduct the business of the church and that as you give your tithes faithfully, you put that into the hands of God that the body that's been entrusted with it will, will spend that money as God ordains that money to be spent. Somebody amen that. I better hear amens from everybody because sometimes that's hard to do. Amen? Because uh, first off, it, it feels sacrificial to, for us to give it. Right? We feel like, well, this is my, I, I produce this money, this is my 10%. We give it, and we want to have some control over it. Listen, you, you'll have to put your faith in God and faith and trust in the body uh, that God, first off, you have to believe. Did God provide a pastor? Amen? Or did you get a pastor? Amen? You know, it's, it's how you look at it that way. Did God provide a body of believers to be trusted with the work of the church? Or did you handpick a body of people. It's all in our attitude of how we look at it. We have to either believe that God ordained and, and has gifted us with uh, the leaders of our congregation and that God uh, blesses that, or we have to believe that we've got our hand on that. Amen? And so there's got to be a mentality, a change in all of those things. I, should feel like, I feel like this is going to be like a seven-part series. This is, whew, I'm sweating. And the heat's turned on in here. Something, cause I, there's a whole other climate. I feel like I'm still in Texas, Brother Rhett, this morning. But... Uh, Anyhow, so, so how, we, how we look at those things is very important. We have to understand that, if, listen, if, if you don't trust your church, if you don't trust the leadership of your church, you're likely not in the right church. Amen? Now, there's no reason not to church, not to church your leaders, not to trust your church leaders in this body right here. I can tell you, the Bible says, know those that work amongst you. I, know these people. I've worked side by side with them. I, I recognize their spirit. And so there's a trust that you can be have. You ought to attend a body of believers where you trust that God is moving in their midst. And so as we give, we ought to believe, amen, that we're giving and we can entrust the body. But what does God say about that? Amen. It's not just your pastor telling you that today. We have to look at what God says about that. So a tithe Okay, amen, is designated to be brought into the storehouse. This is not something we can designate. Amen. We're going to look in the Old Testament here, and you'll see the tithes were brought to the priest. They were brought to, uh, brought to the temple. Amen. That was the thing that, that was to be done. This is, we're talking now Old Testament. We'll get into the New Testament in a minute because he deals with it in both places. But that was brought to the storehouse. That was what was intended. Now, an offering is a different thing. Amen. I mean, Joe and Sue want to give an offering of, of investing in food and all of those things. That's an offering. That's not a tithe. The tithe comes to the storehouse. I mean, if Sister Bonnie wants to buy a van for the church, she's not taking her tithes to buy a van for the church. She's giving an offering to go toward the van. Are you with me on that? Do you understand the difference between the two? The offering, we can designate an offering. If, if Brother John decides he wants, to, uh, he wants to give an offering for the concrete out to the building out back, he can do that. But his tithes go into the storehouse. You don't designate your tithes for concrete. It doesn't work that way. The tithes are to go into the storehouse. Everybody with me on that? Because a lot of people don't understand that. We don't talk, it's because we don't talk about it. Preachers are uncomfortable preaching about it. This preacher right here is a little hot on the call this morning because uh, it's, it is, it's not the easiest topic in the world because I know how people feel about it. They say, well, the preacher's coming after my money. I can tell you right now, I'm not coming after your money. Amen. What I want you to do is be obedient and faithful to the things of God, and I want you to enjoy a blessing for what I hope you're already doing. And I hope you'll be blessed in a greater way because you'll approach it with a different attitude, understanding this is why I give. And I want you to be able to give, and I want you to be able to give cheerfully, and I want you to be able to give with trust that you can release that and count on that God is going to increase you because of your faithfulness, not because of the size of your check, not because of what you did, but because of your faithfulness to believe and trust in Him, put your, uh, to praise Him. And again, just like you can enter into the service with an attitude of worship, you can put a dollar in the offering plate with an attitude of worship. I do this because I trust God. I do this because I submit even my finances. I submit my body. Amen. I submit my will. I submit my service, my talents, my time, and even my finances. I submit over that God is supreme and I exalt Him. He comes before the electric bill. 
Amen. He comes before spectrum. Amen. He comes before the internet. That's going to disturb some of y'all. Amen. He even comes before biscuit gravy, Brother Dwayne. Right? Even before the sustenance of my body, he comes first. That's first fruit giving. So do you understand the difference between a tithe and an offering? We don't designate our tithes. A tithe has already been designated by God. That is God's money. The first 10%, the first fruits, is an ordination by God to say, give of your first fruits of your increase. That is what God has required. Bring your offerings. If you want to designate your offering to missionaries over in Haiti, give an offering. Amen. If you want to take care of the little kids in Guatemala, give an offering. If you want to pay for concrete out back, give an offering. Amen. But if you want to be faithful and obedient to do what God, God has called you to do, that first 10%, that is God's money. Amen. That's what a tithe is, church. Uh, that's what a tithe is. And so we, uh, well, let's just look at Leviticus, uh, the 20. Third chapter, verses 9 through 11. This is what it says. The Lord spoke to Moses. This is what he said. Speak to the people of Israel. Say to them, right, when you come into the land that I give you, reap its harvest, right? So God, God gives the increase. I want you to reap the harvest. Then he says, you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to where? To the priest, right? So he says, I want you to bring the first fruits of the harvest where? To the priest. Bring it into the storehouse. We'll deal with that in a second. Now, the next slide here, I believe, shows you what a sheaf is. Sometimes we read stuff in the Bible, and we don't always understand what it is. But what it was is like taking a gathering of like barley or a gathering of wheat, and it would be tied together. And that's what it's talking about. So when you see that, that's what he's saying. He says, bring this, bring this to the priest. And he says, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord so that you may accept it on the day after the Sabbath. The priest shall wave it. All right? So going beyond that. And all the tithe of the land, we're looking at Leviticus 27.30, amen. It says, and all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is is the Lord's, and it's holy, amen, unto the Lord. All right, did you you read that with me, right? All the tithe of the land, right? Again, tithe being a Hebrew word, it means 10%. All the tithe of the land belongs to God, whether it's the seed of the land or fruit of the tree, it's the Lord, and it's holy unto the Lord. Again, so it's, this is God's portion. This is the portion that God has said for us to set aside as His people. Again, recognizing His Lordship over top of our life, trusting in Him. God's not asking us to do above and beyond what we're capable of doing. He's asking us to be faithful and obedient, not just come to church, not just be saved and believe in Jesus. But He says, listen, this is a part of you are my children, you are my people, and this is what I'm calling you to do. So we have to ask the question, is God the Lord of your finances, right? So it's it's just as important. uh, We talk about God being the Lord of our lives, the Lord of our time, the Lord of our talent, the Lord of my mouth, the Lord of my thinking, amen? Is He also Lord of your finances? And He is to be. Uh, I've heard this said, and you've heard this probably quoted many a time, but either God is Lord of all or He's not Lord at all, right? And that's how it has to be. The mentality of the church should be be exactly that way, that God is uh, indeed Lord of all. So that's the thing that God wants us to do. He wants us to submit ourselves to Him. Again, this is just another place. Now, listen, I'm talking about money specifically today, okay? And, and I'm, I'm spending this whole service. This is what we're talking about. You have to understand, I don't, you, don't, you don't hear me preach on this topic all of the time. So we're not focused on money. I want you to know that. This is just one portion. It's just like preaching about faith. I don't preach about faith in every service, but faith is something that we have to apply. We have to be faithful and have faith to be able to even do this that we're talking about this morning. All right, so don't walk out of here and say, oh, preacher, just driving money. Listen, we have to, uh, there, there's things like this that have to be preached. And there's people in this room right now that had no idea but the difference between a tithe and an offering. We're sitting in a room right now where people didn't know the difference. Somebody listening from home right now didn't know what the difference was with a tithe and an offering. Thought the two were tied together. We put money in the plate, same thing. It's not the same thing. There's people today that don't even understand what the 10% is. When do I get? I, I, I answer the question about uh, before taxes and after taxes. I've always looked at that scripture and, and what I've looked into it, and you may differ. And I'm going to give you my opinion about this one because I don't know uh, that, we can, uh, that we can nail it down. I've always believed it says the first 10% of your increase. Amen? So, so whatever your check is for, 
that's your increase, all right? And so I have always operated under the fact that it was after, after everything else has been removed from it before I get it, amen, this is my increase, this is what I got, all right? Meaning if the crows ate food out of the field, right, God was not telling them to take a tenth of what the crows had eaten, right? Now we got a few crows eating our food in Washington, D.C., right? Amen anyway, all right? So, we both, so just because the crows have eaten part of the crop already, amen, your increase is what you're to give him. That's what I believe. Now, again, I will tell you, that's my opinion. That could differ. And if you believe something different, that's okay. You give out of the gross if that's what you feel is the right thing to do. I'm just going to tell you that's what I have believed in a way God has directed me. I've always given that way. God has always blessed me in giving that way. So I do believe it's in our increase. Now, I'll tell you this, all right, for me... If I sell something, right? Now, I may have bought it and I paid taxes on it and did all of that. I paid, to, I paid tithes on the money that I bought the thing with. But if I sell something, I always pay my tithes on what it is I sell. I've just always felt that that's what I'm supposed to do. So if I sell, you know, a, a piece of electronics on, on, online for $200, the first $20 of that money, is I, I bring it to the storehouse. I believe that's God's money. That's just how I have always operated. It is $200 is an increase. And so the first fruits of my increase, 10% of that's $20. A lot of times I give more above that, and it, but the above that is in an offering. Amen. All right. We're getting there. Hallelujah. All right. Now, I want you to listen to these scriptures in Malachi. Now, we're still in the Old Testament. We're going to get to the New Testament. We're going to deal still in the Old Testament. God's very plain here in the book of Malachi about tithing. All right? So I want you to listen to this. Don't discount it. Oh, my goodness. People are, are, are robbing themselves of their experience with God because they want to throw away the New Test or the Old Testament. God said, listen, the Old Testament is given for instruction, not, not to be thrown away. We're not just, not just a New Testament church. doesn't mean we're just going with the New Testament. We have to also pay attention to the Old Testament. So here we have this direction that's given to us. He asks the question. He says, will a man... This is in Malachi 3, 8 through 10. There it is. All right, it says, Will a man rob God? And, and he says, Yet you have robbed me. But you say, where, 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 How in the world have we robbed you? This is in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes, where? Into the storehouse, right? Again, God's designated. This is where it's to come to, that there may be meat in my house. Now, I just want to stop right there. I've got that highlighted. Uh, he says, bring them into the storehouse, and he gives the reason why he wants it brought into the storehouse. Now, I ask the question, does God need your money? Well, God himself doesn't need your money, but God has ordained. At this time, we had temple workers. We had the Levite priests that were doing the work of the temple. Listen, people were able to come to the temple. Now, God said, listen, I want you to bring your tithes into the storehouse that, listen, that there would be a supply in my storehouse. Now, we are the body of the living Christ. This is our gathering place. This is our church. We are representative into the community, amen, of God, amen, right here, this church. And God intends that uh, that the tithes are given into God's storehouse at this church, that, listen, that there is meat, amen, within this body, meaning this church ought to have the ability to benefit the kingdom. This church ought to have the ability not only to be able to take care of its members, meaning if somebody is down and out within the congregation, somebody's in need of food, uh, maybe somebody's just hit a hard way to go, or somebody's just got a financial woe, whatever the situation is, there ought to be meat within God's house uh, that the people of God ought to be taken care of. Now, I can share a scripture with you on that. God says, take care of those that are in need, especially those of the Household of faith. Where does that come from? Well, we are faithful to give that first 10% that the body of Christ... I'm going to tell you right now, I want you to know that everything that this church needs, God has sent in through this body. Do you believe that? <laughs> I need to be a linebacker. Let's do this. Everything that this church needs has been sent in. Now, he doesn't send it to the mailbox out here, amen, a check and a letter from heaven, but he sends it in through the body of Christ, meaning he has provided the wealth through you and I. Our first fruits 
of our increase, what has been sent in through the body is enough to take care of this church. Somebody a minute. Do you believe that? Now, I believe that with everything in me because I know that God takes care of His people. And I also know that this place, we're here not just to be another building to block the wind from across the field over there. Now, that's not why we're here. We are here for the very purpose of sowing into the kingdom of God, to growing the kingdom of God. We want to thank Allie and Ryan. We're going to grow this church one way or the other. They're going to help us along. Amen? Right? We're going to have a new baby. We're going to add to the numbers. Tex and Amanda already doing their work. I want the rest of you guys to jump in. Amen? We're going to grow this church. Hallelujah. Right? Now, we're, we're so, so God has brought in, and, and the whole idea of why we're here, we're, we've had the opportunity to be online, and a lot of people that are seeing the service, we're investing. It took money to buy the things needed to be online, amen? I mean, and God sent in that into the body of believers, and as the body of believers have been faithful to give their first fruits from, because there was meat in God's house, we had the finances to be able to go out and take care of some of the things that need to be taken care of. I read your scripture there at the beginning that those that are living, that, that are sowing into the gospel, that are living for the gospel, have to be provided they're living for the gospel. Amen. My kids and I ate this week. Amen. Because you were faithful to pay into your tithes, my family is able to eat and I'm able to minister the gospel. Meaning I have the time to sit down and study. I have the time to invest and go and pray and sit down with people. I have the time uh, to be able to do the things that are necessary within the gospel. That, that because you have been faithful to provide, amen, because you've been faithful to give that part that God has already designated that this is His part, amen, we're able to continue, amen. I'm prepared to be in this service this morning uh, because God has provided to you and then you have been faithful to give and so the storehouse had meat in order that the pastor could feed his family this week amen it's again the reason that we, we're not sitting in the dark with candles this morning understand because God provided the wealth within the congregation because you brought the increase your increase into the house of God we have the lights on this morning we have screens on with the scriptures this morning. We're going live on Facebook and there are people watching us on the other side of the country today. Do you understand that? My mama is going to be watching today. She is in church this morning. She better be anyway. Anyway, she'll be watching later because of, of our investment. We're paying for internet. All of that is finances that are taken care of. We have been given food to, to the needy, amen, along the way because God has provided. Because God has provided and He's has brought those means into within the body of Christ. We're sitting here and we've got a shelter out back that's going to give us the ability to minister to people uh, that has already opened the door for us to be able to do so already. Again, God sent in the increase within the body of Christ. There has been offerings that have been given. <coughs> Take care of that this morning. Amen. So, so understand that there's a reason that God says, listen, you have to let go of it. I have got plans. I have got plans. I've got a direction. It's not up for you to decide, amen. The only thing you have to decide is whether you're going to be faithful to God or not, whether you're going to subject yourself to God or not. Is He going to be Lord or not? That's it. Your tithe is simply that portion right there to turn it over to God and say, I recognize where my increase came from. I recognize where my wealth came from. I recognize where the strength, yes, I may have put in the 40 hours this week in order to get the paycheck, but the strength in my body, amen, is because of him. Sister Joanne's sitting here. Brother Tom sitting here. Where does your strength come from? I know where their strength. They're sitting here by the grace of God. They know where their strength come from. Do you recognize where your ability, amen, to be able to have the increase came from? Amen. So let's go beyond that in the Scripture. And, and it says, now, I want you to pay attention to this. He says, I want you to bring the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. So he gives, he gives the where, and then he says this, and, and, and this is important. He says, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. Now, God says, I want you to do this. And, he, and, and basically, if you study that out, he says, it's going to put God to the test. And this is what it's going to do. He says, because, he says, I want, you to, I want you to put me to test, and this is what's going to happen. Says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. Just put me to test. This is what's going to happen. You're faithful to do what it is I'm telling you to do. You give that part, amen, that I have already given you. I've given you the 100%. I'm asking you to give back 10%. 
faithfully trust it. And he says, and then this is going to prove me. He says, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Somebody amen that. Hallelujah. Now again, I've already read you the scripture. Seed sowing harvest. This is what we're talking about. God says, I want you to sow, amen, with an expectation of a harvest. You can sow faithfully and you can expect that God is going to take care of you. Amen. Now, I want to back up to the beginning of this. Because again, it's very important to look at it how God sees this. He says, will a man rob God? Now, that's, pretty, that's some pretty, pretty heavy-handed, heavy-handed speaking. Will a man rob God? God looks at it as robbery. Man, this is, it's not yours, it's His. He's asking you to give what is, what is already His. So by withholding that, amen, it, it's, God deems it, He has compared it to this right here. He said it's robbery. Yet you have robbed me. How have you robbed me? He says it right here. In tithes, now I want you to pay attention to the second part of this because it also lays out another expectation of God. Tithes and offerings. He's not just asking for the 10%. Now there's, there's no, I can take you through the scriptures. You're not going to find any place where God is legally saying you have to give an offering. But there's an expectation of an offering that's there. And an offering can come in a lot of different ways. All right? If you need, if your prize chicken laid some good eggs and you want to offer up some eggs, hallelujah. All right? We'll eat the prized eggs. All right? Uh, that, that, you can give that as an offering. I mean, what it, whatever it is, you have to judge that out with God. But God expects that, listen, the 90%, he's leaving me with the 90%, he says the 10% is mine, the 90% you can do uh, what, what you need to be able to do with it. Be a good steward of that, amen, but you can also give an offering out of that. I mean, if the church needs concrete, give out of your 90%. You can't give out of the 10% for the concrete. The, the 10% is God's. He'll decide that. The other 90%, if you want to give an offering out of that, give it out of that. Say amen to that. Do you understand? Are you with me so far? All right, you can, if you don't, get up with me. I don't care to sit down and talk with you, but I want you to have a full understanding of this because it's important. I don't want you just writing checks. I want you to write them for a reason. I don't want you just giving of your time. I want you to give for a reason, with a purpose, and I want you to enjoy the blessing from those things. All right, so let's look at, now we're going to jump into the New Testament. I see the time, but i got to get through these scriptures right here. It's very important. I'm going to just jump into the New Testament so you can see what it is that Christ said about these things. All right? Now, Christ didn't just stand around preaching about money all the time. As your preacher right here is not doing, the, is not doing it as well. But he did talk about it. This is what he says. He's, he says, Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? Now, I want you to pay attention to some things here. And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you in sick in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say unto you, as you did unto the one of the least of these, my brethren, you did unto me. Now, the only reason I bring this scripture for an important purpose right here, that as we give into the body of Christ and as this church, amen, as, as God has increased you in your wealth, and as we give into the body of Christ and as this church has meat in the storehouse, the finances that are there, and we're able to pour into the community. You have to understand, God, Christ was very plain about this. He's like, listen, when you feed the hungry, you're not, you have to understand, as you've done to the least, man, you put a jacket on a homeless guy that's sleeping under a bridge somewhere, as you've done to the least of these. That guy in prison that everybody else has thrown to the side because he did something terrible, and because you went and you cared for him, maybe you put a little money in his commissary uh, so he's able to buy a couple of ramen noodles instead of eating whatever kind of food they got. Uh, amen. He says, as you've done to the least of these, amen, you've done unto me. So some people say, uh, do, do we, should we give? Should we give to this ministry? Should we give to that ministry? Jesus said right here, you better give. You ought to because he said in the same way that you're giving, to them, he says, it's just like you've given it to me. Amen. All right, God, God's really, Christ is relating himself with the lowly. Amen. Those people that oftentimes, and this has been, and I don't believe this about this church. I'm just going to say, I really don't believe this about this church. I believe that this body right here really believes, and in, 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 in we look across the board, and we don't see ourselves as better than, than other people. I, at least I, that's not the perception that I get. I believe this is a body that believes that, hey, listen, sometimes people are down and out. Amen. They don't make us better than them. Right? They're just down and out. Uh, any of us ever been down and out? I was down and out for a long time. Amen. I pushed my van out of Walmart parking lot backwards. 
probably down and out. Amen. All right. We've all we've been there. All right. So so looking at that. So so again, understanding again, God wants uh, th- this church uh, when it's blessed financially. Amen. When this church is blessed financially, and we are sowing that uh, what God has blessed us with back into the kingdom of God, which is exactly what we're doing. We're not just storing it up. We're not just sitting on it. Amen. We're not just looking at the the bottom line and saying this is what we got, but we're sowing it and investing it into the kingdom of God, investing it into the ministry of God, amen, that we're reaching those. And Jesus said, listen, as you've done the least of these, when you set your heart to reach the world, amen, uh, you're going to be blessed of God in whatever way that you're doing that. All right. So again, uh, all right, Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 23, 23. I'm going to be quick, guys. I'm not going to linger too much longer, but I do need to get through these. So you just bear with me and stay awake for just a few more minutes. All right, cheeseburger will be hot. Your meatloaf will be hot. Amen. Hopefully. If not, you can reheat it. All right, here we go. Matthew 23, 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. All right, now he's coming down on the religious people. He says, uh, he says for you tithe, mint, deal, and coming, uh, uh, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law. Now, first off, the scribes and the Pharisees said, listen, you've been faithful to tithe. Now, again, it comes back into the place that, that, that just writing a check, Noah, is not what God's looking for us to do. It's not just that. All right, and he lays this out in this principle right here. He says, listen, you, you've been tithing, but you have neglected the way to your matters. What does God look at? He says, of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. He says, now listen, so when he talks about tithing, he says, these things you ought to have done. He says, they had been doing these, these things you ought to have done. He said, but with it, without neglecting these other things. So again, it comes back to the place of how. Amen. How are you giving? Are you a cheerful giver? Amen. Are you giving out of love? Are you giving an attitude of worship? He said, listen, you ought to have done those things, but don't neglect these other things. I mean, don't give and then, and then be bitter. Don't give with reserve. Don't give with an attitude. He's got to make sure that, listen, the thing that God is weighing out, and this is the thing that we're preaching about in this church all the time in, in relationship, is that we're making sure that we're sowing into the kingdom of God. The most valuable thing that you're going to sow is not your finances. It's going to be your heart. It's not your finances. It's going to be your love. It's going to be the revealing of the attributes of Jesus Christ. The finances are just a necessary part of the kingdom of God being able to operate as it does. The weightier thing, and Jesus laid this out. He said, listen, the tithe you should have been giving. You, don't, you shouldn't have neglected that. You did well in doing so. He said, but the weightier things, and then he lays it out. I mean, Brother Bill, it's good that you pay your tithes. He said, but the weightier thing is, is I want you to love. I want you to love. I want you to have the attributes of God. I want you to be filled with the Spirit of God. And then I want you to be kind and gentle and meek. And I want you to bear the fruits of the kingdom of God. Amen? And so he lays out the way to your thing. So he deals with the religious people. He said, listen, you're just religiously giving. And you ought to give. He said, but I want you to be spiritual. I want you to be changed. I want you to have a heart of change. And that's what we ought to be as the children of God. I've only got 23 more scriptures, guys. We'll be done. Amen. I do, I do need to get through these New Testament scriptures. Let, uh, Luke eleven forty two says this. But woe to you Pharisees for your tithe. Man, again, uh, in a, hold on just a second. Same scripture. I just want to show you that we read it in Matthew. We see it again in Luke. Again, it's being dealt with in Luke. And so this is, is a significant. I'm not going to read through that because I don't want to take the time on it. All right. So we have to understand that the general concept uh, behind uh, behind tithing at that time was the support of the ministry uh, of God. I Meaning, when we talk about the ministry, we're not talking about a man. We're talking about this church has a ministry for this community. We have a lot of ministries, meaning outreach, our youth, the preaching that goes on. We have people that are going and visiting with the sick. That's all an outreach. It's all a part of the ministry of God. And that's what it's uh, intended to be. And so he told them in the Old Testament, he said, I want you to bring it. I want you to bring your offerings to the storehouse. The storehouse, the temple of God, was intended to minister to the Israelites. They were, the Levites were in charge of taking care of the increase of Israel in order to be able to take care of God's people. Are you with me on that? Amen? All right. Now, let's just talk about Paul for just a second. All right, 1 Corinthians 16, uh, 1 and 2 says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, 
as I directed the churches of Galatia, now Paul's teaching, he says, so you are also are to do. He says, listen, to take an offering, you're to do these things. You're to continue. Now, we're in the New Testament church, guys. They're gathering differently. It's no longer about temple worship. It's no longer about the Levite priests. It's no longer about those things. The veil has been torn in the temple. Jesus Christ is now the high priest at this point. People are being saved. They're being filled with the Spirit of God. And now the New Testament church is being built. Amen? And so they're gathering. We have the church of Galatia. We have the church of Philip. All, all of these different places, all right? So now we're, now we're in the New Testament church, and we're still talking about uh, the offerings along the way. Now, Paul was a missionary going from place uh, to place, going to eat churches. But he says here, he says, I want you, just as I told him, Galatia, you're also to do on the first day of every week, even, even as each of you are to put aside and store it up as he may prosper, right? Again, the increase, that there will be no collecting uh, when I come. Again, and I, and I don't want to spend a lot of time here, but when it comes to, to missionaries, some people say, well, we ought to just put our money right here in the United States, okay? I don't want you to look at it that way. Paul was a missionary. He was on foot. And when you look at his travels, he spent years traveling. Now, if Paul had been in this day, he could have jumped on a plane and been in any one of those places just a few hours, right? So it wasn't about, it wasn't about going to a, uh, necessarily another country. God didn't look or frown upon that. He sent Paul on a big journey. I mean, he was out preaching to the church. We have to understand, as God has blessed this nation financially, we are blessed people. Even our impoverished people in this nation are so far above financially than the people that are living uh, in, in places like Guatemala and Haiti, some of these third world countries. Uh, they're living much different. So as God has given us the increase and we have the ability, amen, to as a, as a congregation to bless a missionary, to be able to go out and preach the gospel, we ought to do so. And we ought to do it without reserve. We ought to do it uh, without hindering or fussing with people. Yes, we need to sow into the kingdom of God right here in the United States. But there is also, it's very important that we're sowing into the kingdom, uh, listen, all over the world where we have the ability to be able to do so. I can just tell you, going to Guatemala, not speaking of the people in the ill will and kind of those things, but they're, uh, I'm going to tell you, they, they don't have an understanding of the kingdom. They don't have an understanding of the gospel and a lot of those rural areas that we go into like we have here. They don't have the ability to receive the television and some of the teachings or even be able to get a, uh, some of the software, things like that, that we can study and be able to look at. They don't have that ability. So we go into places that are remote, people that love God, but don't have a full understanding, haven't had the education. And so we have the ability to, to share the gospel. So when you give into, uh, and make sure that you're given to an organization that you have trust in, but when you give and you have the ability, somebody can go and minister the gospel, you can give. Listen, with a heart to, to believe and understand that you're sowing into the kingdom of God. Let me look at the rest of this real quick, see if there's anything else I need to add. All right, let me just this last scripture, I promise. All right, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7. It says this, the point is, is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Again, we're talking about the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the law of seed sowing harvest. He says, he says, and whosoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Each one of you must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. I don't want you to give just because I preached this message this morning. I want you to give because it's the right thing. I want you to give just because, well, I better give. Pastor's going to be mad at him. I don't even know what you give. Amen. I want you to give because I want you to be faithful to God. I want you to give because I don't want you to fall into the category of you've robbed God. I want you to give because God has given you increase. I want you to give because you've recognized God has blessed you. Amen. I want you to give with an attitude of worship. And I can promise you right now, if you sow that seed, amen, that there's a whole difference when you sow with the right attitude. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So I'm closing. I'm done. Hallelujah. Amen. Tithe and offering. You understand the difference? Amen. Let's see. If you got something you'd like to ask about that, you talk to me after service today or you reach out to me. Call me on the phone. Shoot me a text message. We'll talk about it. Okay. Uh, the main thing, like I said, it's not, it's not just about a legalistic giving. I don't want you to legalistically show up to church, and I don't want you to just legalistically put an offering in the plate. I want you to give out of worship. I want you to recognize what God has done in your life. And I want you to give as He's asked you to give, just because here's the thing. One of our expressions of love is this. God says, if you love me, do what? Obey my commands. How can we express our love to God? It's by being faithful to Him. 
God tells us that we're to lay our lives down a living sacrifice. We're to subject ourselves to Him. You can't cherry pick that. You can't pick and choose what you're going to be faithful to follow and what you're not. God says be faithful. And this is one of those places that we can be faithful. And listen, it's a faithfulness that will be, uh, that will listen, there is a blessing that comes behind it. God says, as you give, amen. He said, I want you to do this. He said, don't rob me. I want you to give. And he said, it's going to put me to the test, but I'll show you. He said, I'm going to open up the heavens, and I'll pour out a blessing on you that you can't even contain. Some of you guys in here have experienced that. Some of you guys that have been faithful to pour into the kingdom of God have enjoyed and reaped the harvests of God. And you're sitting there right now, and fi- you, you have been blessed financially, amen, because you have been faithful to God and because God has been faithful to do exactly what he said. That is something wonderful, amen? Praise the Lord. Listen, I hope this has been a help to you. I hope it has helped you today. Uh, I want you to give with a, with a right heart, and I want you to give out of an attitude of worship. Uh, and I can tell you right now, I believe, I believe with everything in me, church. I can just tell you, I wish you, wish you, I wish you had the, the vision that I have for this church. I, I want us to get, all get on the same page. But I believe God is going to do something beautiful right here. And I believe he already has been. But I, believe, I, believe, I think we've got something out on the horizon. I, I believe that with everything in me. God is, is sending in an increase through his people. Amen. He's increasing us in a lot of ways. I see people that are stepping up in their walk with God. That is an increase. We've had young people that have been coming in and out the doors. You pray for our young people, but there's an increase that's coming in those things right there. We're going to have. I'm praying for leaders to be raised up in this congregation. I believe with everything in me, Brother Dwayne, that God's going to raise up some leaders in the midst of this congregation. You need to pray it as well. We need some, some, uh, some people with backbone that, that, listen, have a desire to preach the gospel, amen, that have a calling on their lives. We're not seeing this happen, develop along the way. We're not seeing uh, men and women of God that are stepping up to say, I want to serve the God. Listen, church, we need to be sowing with an expectation and putting in the request, God, raise up some leaders. We need some strong backbone preachers that ain't afraid to preach the gospel, amen, as it is, amen, not, not swaying this direction or that direction, but preaching it, amen, as God has laid it out, because that is going to thing, that's going to be the thing that causes the church to thrive. Hallelujah. Sister Belva ain't here, so I ain't got nobody to pick on. Who's leading my Who's leading my son? Get up here, Allie. What are you doing? What's taking you so long? <laughs> Amen. All right, come on up.